Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the second match between Kiko and Dentarg, inter-clan match of Team Ash, I should mention. Upper left-hand corner, yellow Terran, bottom left-hand corner. Gray Protoss uh, for Dentarg. This is on Good Night, so more of a big macro-oriented map, which might play out towards Dentarg style of play, but I don't know. I feel like Kiko in game one showed a lot of good map movement. I feel like that the dropship... I actually like seeing the dropships mid-game, if you can pull them off. Because the dropships there just are really disruptive to those pylon blockades, which Protoss are oftentimes so reliant on. But Kiko, actually, I do want to mention this. Showing some really strong macro that last match. Really strong macro. And also a bit of build order flexibility. So looking, I think, a little bit sharper than he did in previous seasons. And we'll see if that turns into a round of eight birth. But this being good night, gonna have his work cut out for him. I actually feel like this, as I say that, I almost feel like it, I don't know. What do you guys think? Sometimes I feel like it's a little challenging for Terrence specifically because of this base. Sorry, this base right here. The mineral only that many people opt to take just because there is kind of this lower ramp edge. Makes it a little bit more of a challenge to hold. Defensive barracks. Hugging the Nexus. Looks like we are, however, seeing an assimilator right after Gateway. And on the four-player map, that also opens up opportunities for Protoss. To have a little bit more shenanigans. I actually wonder what the... Has anyone done this? Has anyone broken down the statistics of Protoss versus Terran on four-player maps? So I'm curious what the statistic, the statistical difference is, is between Protoss and Terran on two-player maps versus four-player maps. And I actually am wondering what the breakdown looks like there, if there is like an advantage. Food for thought. Anyway, first elt being produced. SCV moving out for Kiko. Unfortunately, it is going in a clockwise pattern, so it's going to end up scouting Dentarg last. You have three SCV on gas. Another supply depot along that edge to deal with. And it looks like this first probe scout for Dentarg is going to get initial scout. I'm wondering if he's going to opt to be aggressive with the Zealot or if he's going to hold it at home base here. SCV pulling off now that the gas are there. So this suggests we're going to see one base into expansion. Marine now blockading the ramp. So might even be able to deny information here depending on how this probe micros. Taking a bit of damage. Nice blockade from Kiko. So Dentarg now in the dark. The Zealot making his way across. SCV realizing that it was a close scout, going to go ahead and switch positions. So everything heads up from Dentarg thus far. Second Marine going to join on the front. So it's going to need to be wary of that Zealot incoming. Range is being upgraded. The SCV is going to be able to go ahead and wander up and confirm it. Probe meandering back. It looks like it's going to be an attempt at one gate into expansion. SCV going to get wiped out. Three Marines, however, right on the ramp being grouped up. One of them already down. The second one heavily damaged, trying to make their way back. The Zealot confirms the factory. Another SCV actually making its way across. I think he wants to confirm the natural expansion. Two SCV wandering down to go ahead and bully this as well. One of them, I assume, is going to be here to go ahead and plop down yeah, the bunker on the front. And Duntar grabbing that expansion. Dragoon on the front, not able to stop this SCV, though, from confirming the quick nexus. And actually, are we going to see that bunker canceled? No, still going to keep the bunker. I was wondering if there would be like a bunker cancel, a grab of the command center, and then the rebuild of the bunker. Dragoon moving its way back across. Actually, these Marines overstepping their bounds. So now going to eat some Dragoon fire, trying to scatter... One of them, actually two of them, going to die as a result of this. One of them getting back in the bunker. The second one barely makes it. It's like a cutscene. It's like getting hit in the back by fire, but just basically diving into that spot. And Kiko grabbing an expansion of his own. Some vultures able to sneak through somehow. While I'm not paying attention. Able to get a quick probe kill. And disrupting mining a lot otherwise. Also able to confirm the robotics facility. Here to the south. So seize the robo. I don't think... Was there a cancellation of range? I don't think there There might have been a cancellation of range there. That I missed in the midst of everything. 
So we'll see if we see... Uh, I'm almost expecting robotic support bay. As far as a follow-up. One pylon on that edge. June waiting stalwart where we to potentially block out vultures. Yeah, range was finished. Dragoon with 40 has a... It's already got those two kills. It has a taste for marine blood. And wants more. SCV pulling off the line to go ahead and support one more marine. Being popped in. And a siege tank should be sufficient. Actually, the Dragoon might get wiped out. Yeah. Being bullied back by that siege tank. Command Center online in that natural expansion. Second factory being built. Engineering bay being plopped down. To deal... With potential shuttle harassment, but instead we're seeing three gateways and an observatory actually even being shown on the front door. So three gate off the second expansion, which leads me to believe that Dunkirk's going to get a lot of dragoons out, wants to go ahead and get a shuttle out to potentially deal with any sort of push that Kiko might be going for, and then he's just going to go ahead and grab that third and try to play more of a macro game from there. Fortunately for him, it looks like Kiko's already opting to do something similar. He's working on that plus one weapon, so I think he's thinking about just sitting back, going for more of that macro style build and going for that plus... It's possible he'll go for like an 11 minute plus one, but I think he's... With the timing of the armory, the fact that he's just sitting on this one factory for a long period of time, the fact he's building the Goliath right here to deal with the... any sort of shuttle harass, it leads me to believe that he's going to go for that plus two weapons, plus one push that comes around, I don't know. Kind of a very timing, depending on Protoss these days, or depending on uh, what happens to matches these days. I think it was around the 17 minute mark. Oftentimes, where we see that. Third base. SCV's gonna trying to wander across. Conf was expecting a base here with a pylon block, but let's see if it wanders up and confirms this. Yeah, so able to wander up and confirm the third base. Dentarg doing a good job. Staying on top of the economy. Turrets have already been planted, so that's despite the lack of Reaver. So a bit of an economic cost to Kiko. Second gas being grabbed, and now it's the macro race. And ooh, with the macro race, I don't know that Kiko's realized these two SCV are idle inside his gas, and that is going to cut into and looks like he might have canceled the factory or something else. Finally, he's like, hey, what happened to my gas? Finally realized, okay, SCV, get in there. But that is going to hurt because this is, again, it's a race to who, who can macro more rapidly. As far as the continuation here, plus one weapon is going to finish in not too long. Dentark checking out, just planting some troops near the third. Potentially delay it, but again, I think this is more going to be... Yeah, play from there. Third factory being dropped, two machine shops down. Dragoon's also going to sweep to the north to go ahead and check that additional expansion. Science facility. Should see plus two weapons immediately. And that second army being grabbed. So. Yeah, Kiko going to play from there. Now it's that macro race. And Dentarget looks like he's got to jump on this. The question is, is does he opt for High Templar? It looks like he's got plus one weapons working. Does, is he going to opt for High Templar, or is he going to go more for Arbiter play? That tends to be the thing that Protoss are missing in these defenses. This feels like all too often they're going Gateway Man. And you just have to have absolutely perfect troop movement and overwhelming amounts of troops. You'd have to be so far economically ahead, and I just don't think that's going to happen with what's happening here on the ground. But... Dentarg up in supply as I say that. My one concern, though, is, is he has not plopped down any additional... So this is now the Citadel of Adun at near the 9-minute mark. <clears throat> Which means maybe he can rely on High Templar and Storm, but he, I think he's going to need to rely on Shuttle and Drop to potentially stop the plus 2 weapon assault. So plus 2 weapons now on the way, plus 1 armor on the way. Should see two factories... Two additional factories plopping down not too long. A handful of vultures trying to sweep through, but Dentarg pretty well defended up, just making sure that there's no fourth base. We do have one shuttle out with speed. We'll see if there's a second shuttle in production. Doesn't look like it. Plus one weapons will be there. Some idle probes blocked in here. The comsat confirms the Citadel of Adun. 
And yeah, Dentarg looks like he wants to try to do it with just gateway units. He's got six gateways, adding the Templar archives, maybe with some high Templar. Looking to do some disruption to the north. Flying over that turret. Able to get the Reaver drop. Is he going to get a shot off? The Reaver stalls. Didn't even get the single shot off. He's going to be able to take out that missile turret, though. To have additional attempts. Goliath working against that shuttle. Shuttle gets wiped out with the Reaver. The Reaver never even fired. Does confirm that there's a dropship here. I don't know if the dropship is going to be all that successful. Dropping out this third. That is going to delay a potential attack for a bit of time. Third command center being built, though, for Kiko. Where, so where I thought he was going to go for... Looks like he's, yeah, just going to stick on the three factories. So he wants to play more of a long-term macro match. And actually, Dentarg will be in a good position to go ahead and delay that for quite a bit of time. You can see all the Dragoons flooding forward already to make map positioning control over this third near impossible. And I do like that this Vulture has been either on patrol or been wandering out, making sure that additional ninja expansions haven't been grabbed from Dentarg. Additional gateways being grabbed. Psystorm being researched. Additional pylons being set up for that Sim City, And a big wandering army now in the middle of the map. Shuttle nearby for Den Target. Looks like he wants to potentially go for a drop in the main, but there is a cannon here. Den Target will be out of position with a lot of his troops. Checking the north, I think he was expecting the command center here. Instead, the command center looks like it is going to float down to this lower third. So no interruption happening. Looking for high Templar to filter in. There's some high Templar filtering into this army. Additional gateways being added as well. Plus two weapons on the way. But no Arbiters to support. And typically the plus two weapons upgrade build, you're assuming you have poking to negate some of that damage that's not going to be here and plus two weapons plus one armor is here however it's just going to be three factories sorry five factories for dentard so i think he's easily going to be able to go ahead and flip this down even with a smaller troop count just because his troops hit harder and i don't think there's sufficient size storm to go ahead and deal with things otherwise i might be wrong though we'll see not a, not as many siege snakes as you would see otherwise very slow additional base. And now Dentar going ahead and grabbing his fourth. This is like the first High Templar. I think that's the first High Templar we're seeing in this grouping. Another turret being placed. Command Center still not being moved across. Kiko playing this very cautiously. And this is where, yeah, this is where I've seen Kiko falter in the past as well. He's just being a little bit overly cautious, a little bit too slow, and allowing his opponent to go ahead and surge ahead. Double forge down. To start pushing those troop upgrades. This is now pure gateway, man. But with as delayed as this third has been. Yeah, in another two minutes or so. This is going to be sufficient for Dentorg, I think, to fight a lot of this off. Still only one High Templar, though. Sorry, two High Templar. Command Center now floating out. And here's the thing. Dentorg didn't even need to harass all of that. Because Kiko... Had that move out so slow. However, still going to move up. SCV or two looks like it's going to get wiped out and just diving into this. Sidestorm whiffing a lot of the Siege Shanks. Unfortunately, hitting a lot of the Zealots. Now that's catching a lot of the High Templar. And actually, ignore what I said, able to do a lot of damage to that Command Center, forcing it to lift off and back up. Steve Kiko unsieges and moves forward, but while that was happening, we had a drop in the main. Able to take out a lot of probes on a thinning mineral line. He's going to see that Arbiter Tribunal coming online as well. Shuttle's been wiped out. Where are you going, Zealot? Looks like he just wants to leave. He just doesn't like probes, I guess. The troops rallied, and so they're not uh, another... This is... There we go. Just one Zealot. That's all it takes. There you go. One's out, finally going to walk in. Take that out. The Burning Command Center are going to move back up. Kiko looking to do some economic damage. Supply counts are actually even. 
But Dentark in a much stronger economic position. As soon as he gets this base saturated. And oh. Moving probes across is going to lose a lot of probes for free here. A lot of probes for free. But they are going to be able to go ahead and make their way across. The Stargate exposed to the vultures. But Dentarg is grouping up to go ahead and make another assault and maybe take this command center out. And he's doing this as the CompSat station is there. Group repair on that command center. A lot of siege tanks behind this. The Zelt's not able to get up here. This, And there's no Psy Storm to support. So that army just getting obliterated. Plus three weapons, plus two armor. So now Kiko's just happy to sit back and he's all of a sudden got the supply lead. Got a lot of factories. No third machine shop as of yet. But he can go ahead and sit back and macro. And just hit 200 before Dentarg does and push the game from there. Science Vessel even checking out the 12 o'clock location, so if you wanted to, you can go ahead and grab a fourth base. So Kiko now in a strong position moving into the late game. Oh, these high, a high Templar gets wiped out. Ugh. Two High Templar get wiped out by those vultures. Amazing trade for Kiko. More probes being migrated. Well, now Dentarg got his work cut out for him. He's behind in the supply. Behind in upgrades, I believe. Yep, he's got plus two weapons. He's got some Arbiters out, but they don't have a lot of energy. Fortunately for him, Kiko just running on the two machine shops. I was going to say didn't have a lot of siege tanks, but this is looking like a lot of siege tanks. And he's starting to barrel forward. I don't know that Dentark has enough to defend. The stasis even upgraded is the next question. Recall's being upgraded, but he doesn't have enough energy for a recall for quite some time. The Zealot's getting obliterated by mines and vultures, so they're getting completely wiped out. The Arbiter's now wandering in for support. They got EMP'd as well, so it's going to be even longer before they're able to do something. More High Templar getting picked off before they're able to drop Psy Storm. And Kiko, this is again where it starts moving into his strengths, his ability to just move around map. Mine is going to spot that. Only takes a breakout Vulture or two to go ahead and wipe out the bottom right-hand base, but honestly, Kiko doesn't need to bother with the rest of it. He's got an overwhelming amount of troops. And there's Gigi from Dentarg. Realizes he just doesn't have sufficient... Just There's nothing left. So Dentarg drops 2-0 to Kiko. Kiko advances to the winner's match. Dentarg's going to face exit in the loser's match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.